I have only just a minute, only 60 seconds in it, forced upon me, can't refuse it, didn't seek it, didn't choose it. But it's up to me to use it. I must suffer if I lose it. Give an account if I abuse it. Just a tiny little minute, but an eternity is in it. These are the wise words of the late great Dr. Benjamin Mays. He talks about this thing called time. You see, you see, time is, is truly the most valuable thing in the world, isn't it? Steve Jobs once said, my favorite things in life don't cost any money. It's, it's really clear that the most precious resource we all have is time. So what is this thing called time? It can be defined by the scientists in terms of duration, by the vacationer as rest and relaxation by the high schooler as the bell signaling the end of class, or by the activists wondering how long inequality and injustice is going to last. But if you ask me, it is the daily gift from God to explore and exceed our potential in order to live out our purpose. Time is a natural yet non-renewable resource, and as Benjamin Franklin once put it, lost time can never be found again. Greetings, everyone, and thank you for having me here today. My name is Joseph Daniels. I am a civil engineering doctoral student at the University of Arkansas, conducting research in the field of transportation. So today, my topic for you all, as you know, is engineering the value of time. Engineering the value of time. Now, can we all agree that in our society, time is critical? I mean, we hate waiting for everything nowadays, don't we? Don't we? We hate waiting in line. Like earlier we saw, we, hating, we hate waiting for things to buffer, right? <laughs> and, and if you're like me, we hate the commercial breaks on Hulu, so we'll spend the extra money for the commercial free package, won't we? <laughs> right? Right? As we are well into the 21st century where pen pals and letter writing has been replaced by text messaging, emojis, and social media, time is always of the essence, and in transportation, there is no exception. So like I said, I am conducting research in the field of transportation, looking at aviation. So let's focus our attention on aviation, shall we? Aviation transportation has exponentially increased the time efficiency of long distance travel. Hop on an airplane and you can get to anywhere in the country or even the world in just a matter of hours. It allows me and people like me to, to wake up in Silver Spring, Maryland and have breakfast after celebrating Father's Day. By the way, happy Father's Day to my dad. Love you, man. And happy Father's Day to everybody here in the room, all the men in the room. Um, but it, it, it allows me to, to wake up in Silver Spring and, and be here for Ted Knoxville in the afternoon. It, it allows the businessman in High Point, North Carolina to travel to New York City for a few business meetings, but still make it back home for his 6 p.m. NAACP meeting. It even allows the clothes to be worn at a traditional Nigerian wedding in California to be made in Lagos, Nigeria, but shipped here in time for the big day. So I think you all would agree, in our, in our fast-paced society, this is what we need, an aviation system that will allow us to get to our destinations on time, right? Isn't that what we want? We want to be able to, to, to go through security, get on our plane and get in our destination and be there and be square, right? That's just what we need, but unfortunately, that's just not the case. Because annually during the winter season, airports are plagued with snow and ice storms that cause and create and cause and contribute, excuse me, to hundreds of thousands of domestic flight delays and cancellations affecting our valuable time. Now I ask you to sit on the edge of your seats because it's time to participate. I'm gonna ask you a few questions. All right, all right, if you, if you hate if you've ever had a, a time when your flight has been delayed or canceled due to snow and ice, raise your hand, nod your head and say, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, I know. And, and, and if you hate when your time is wasted, raise your left hand, shake your head and say, ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> However, this, in, this invasion of our, of our precious time is all due to our safety. You see, in cold climate regions of our country, when it storms, the, the, the snow and the ice accumulates on the airfield, creating slippery conditions that are not suitable for safe aircraft operations. But to combat that issue currently, airports are applying chemical de-icing salts to melt and prevent ice and snow from bonding to the pavement. Likewise, airports use large 
large snow plows to plow away and clear the airport runways and taxiways. But this method, this method that they use right now, it, it has its flaws. You see these chemical de-icing salts, they, they, they do more harm and damage than good as they create concrete pavement deterioration. They, they affect and damage aircraft brakes, as well as they're harmful to our environment. Likewise, if you ever shoveled your, your driveway, excuse me, if you ever shoveled your driveway, you know that plowing and, and snow, snow plowing is, is, is time consuming, right? Which continues to, to, to cause further delays and more of our time wasted. But what makes matters worse is that this, this method isn't always effective. You see, oftentimes the rate of snowfall is greater than the airport's ability to clear the runways and the taxiways, which means as, as I'm plowing, all of that can come back in just a matter of minutes. And this was evident on March 5th, 2015 at LaGuardia Airport in New York. Some of you may have, uh, have flown there, I believe. And, and this happened when, when an airplane immediately skidded off the runway and crashed due to ice and snow. Now, it's important to note that the picture on the right, it's important to note that this runway was plowed minutes prior to this aircraft attempting to land. And on the left, on November 22, 2014, at Detroit Metropolitan Airport, this aircraft skidded off of its runway because of icy conditions as the airplane was unable to stop because of traction issues. So the impact of accidents like these and, and harsh weather at either one or a few airports can completely disrupt the aviation system, affecting our valuable time and costing airports closures and, 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 and multiple flight delays and cancellations. So the question is, as an engineer, the question is, during the winter season, how do we revitalize or how do we engineer the value of our time without compromising safety? The answer? Airfield heated pavement systems. Hmm, heat the pavement? Now some of you all may have heard, may have heard of, uh, heard of heat, heated pavement systems as they're commonly used on bridges, driveways, and sidewalks. And what they do is they heat the pavement just above freezing so that when snow and ice falls, it melts right away. So what it does is it, it, it leaves the pavement wet, but it's serviceable. You won't slip and fall, okay? So, so, so thinking about it, doesn't it just make sense? Why are we using chemical de-icing salts and plows when we can just heat the daggone thing, <laughs> right? And it, 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 has its, it has its benefits. Number one, if it has its benefits. Number one is, is the aircrafts are able to now land and take off safely, right? That's, all, that's what we all want. Number two, the airfield will, will always be open because you don't have to plow and you don't have to apply your chemical de-icing salts. And number three, if you're not using these chemical de-icing salts, you don't have to worry about <laughs> the effects that it causes to the environment, aircraft breaks, and your concrete. So you, all, you might all be asking, well, with these, with, these, with these great benefits and it's optimal, why on earth have we not heard about these things at our airports? I'm tired of having flight delays. I'm tired of having cancellations. I want to get somewhere during the winter season. Well, the primary reason, this which is everything, is always a reason. It costs too daggone much. It costs too much to construct, and it costs too much to operate. So at the University of Arkansas right now, I am exploring a new heated pavement approach that will drastically reduce operation costs by reducing the amount of energy needed to heat the concrete pavement. Now, building on 70 plus years of research, what I found was that a lot of the heat is being applied into the concrete. So if I can give you a quick visual, this is the top of the slab where the airplane will go. These are where the elements, the, the actual heating elements would be. And I found that to be problematic. Now, why did I find it to be problematic? Because concrete is a great heat absorber, which means when it gets its heat, it doesn't want to let it go. It wants to hold on to it. So if I'm, if I'm applying the heat down here, that means I'm really only heating the inside of the slab, which means an enormous amount of energy, an enormous amount of money at that point is required to get the, get the heat from the inside of the concrete to the surface. So what I plan on doing in my approach is to just put the heat where the heat needs to go. I'm gonna put the heat at the surface. By doing that, I can reduce the amount of energy needed. I can keep the heat on top of the pavement and the pavement will be able to 
act as if it's supposed to, melt the snow and melt the ice. All right? And in a preliminary study that I conducted this past winter season, I found this approach to be promising. So in the future for my research, I, I plan on connecting my heated, heated, heated pavement approach to a solar energy system that will allow me to operate my system at zero cost. So in the years to come, you guys mark my words, in the years to come, you will see these systems at your airports in order for us to get to where we need to get to safely, but in a timely manner. But in the meantime, we will continue to engineer the value of your time. So my friends, I see future engineers and STEM game changers here. I always like to end on a positive note, giving a call to action. So along with this theme, engineering the value of time, the time is now yours to expand your mind without limits, to dream without limits, to empower society through science, technology, engineering, and math, to the time is now yours to improve our nation's failing infrastructure. The time is now yours to make our transportation system more safer and more efficient. As Bill Keene said, yesterday is the past, tomorrow is the future, but today is a gift. And that's why they call it the present. So you all, let's use our limitless gifts to continue to improve and impact our communities and make them better than they are today. Don't count your days. Make your days count. And remember, we have only just a minute, only 60 seconds in it. Force upon us, can't refuse it, didn't seek it, didn't choose it, but it's up to us to use it. We must suffer if we lose it, give an account if we abuse it. Just a tiny little minute, but eternity is in it. Thank you.